Hey guys, Bob Bazer here with First Decision Realty, and welcome to another episode of Top 5. Now, today's episode, we're going to talk about the top 5 things you need to do when you first become a licensed agent. Now there are different aspects of this field. So one is lead generating, and if you haven't seen that video, I have a couple of videos on that. Make sure you look into it. This top five are the top five things that you need to do in order to become a successful agent. Number one, talk to an accountant. So any successful agent knows that in order to run a business, because that's what this is, you need to have an accountant on your side. Someone to tell you what pitfalls to look out for, someone to tell you how to manage your accounts and, well, tax purposes. As a 1099 employee, whether you're doing this part-time or full-time, it's a little different than what you, what you may be used to. Some of you may be getting W-2s, which means your employer is already taking out taxes. As a business owner, you don't have that luxury. So you need to go talk to an accountant, set up separate accounts so that your commission checks can go into there. Uh, different bank cards so that when you're paying for gas or when you're paying for coffee with your client or if you take them out to dinner and you discuss you know the next purchase that they have that you have something that you know you could eventually write off now if you mix it with your personal funds it becomes a lot more challenging and a lot more difficult so do yourself a favor and talk to an accountant find someone you trust and someone that you could work with because an accountant if you've seen the last video also a great place for you to get leads. Number two thing that you need to do as a real estate agent is to put aside your first two commissions. Now if you're doing this full-time it's going to be a little bit different. Um, as a full-time agent you're probably living off of your commission so put aside a small amount, again budgeting is important, put aside a small amount to live off of the rest of your commission, turn around and reinvest it in your business. That's exactly what this is as a business. So figure out how much you need to invest either in telemarketing, door hangers, social media, uh, campaigns, a website, whatever it is that you want to invest your money in, it is important to do that with your first two commissions every single year. Do that, it'll help you to manage your money. For example, I have a telemarketing company that I turn to to market for me. That is RMS, Rocket Marketing Solutions. What they do is they make phone calls for me, they handle my social media account, they're helping develop my website for me at the moment. So for me, it makes sense to put you know $4,800 away off of my first commission so that I know that I could pay someone $5 an hour for the entire year to prospect for me. Now, if they bring me two to three deals, I know I'm making a profit off of them. So it is important to set aside some money every single year off of every single transaction for your marketing, whether that's contacting you know, Rocket Marketing Solutions or any other telemarketing uh, solution provider that's out there, whether it's you know, marketing, uh, social media, whether it's using every door direct mail, EDDM, to send out postcards to a particular neighborhood, a farm campaign, whatever it is, make sure that you're allocating money for that. Figure out your yearly costs, break that down monthly, and then figure out how many commissions you need to meet those obligations. Number three, make sure that you're always talking and keeping your eyes and your ears open to figuring out what is the next great investment opportunity. Now, I don't just mean houses. See, as a real estate agent, whether you're doing it part-time or full-time, you are afforded the luxury of talking to so many different people out there. So you're gonna talk to accountants, you're gonna talk to IT people, you're gonna talk to business owners, you're gonna talk to insurance agents, you're talk to a ton of people from a variety of lifestyles and walks of life. The beauty of that is, you can also see what's making money right now. So that's talking to uh, your clients to see maybe they're looking for an investor for a business they're starting up that maybe you believe in. Whatever it is, keep your eyes and keep your ears open for the next great investment opportunity. You will make a lot of money in this business, guys. Don't just count on this to go on forever. 
use the money, invest it wisely, whether it's in stocks, whether it's in companies, whether it's in homes. The point is to always be investing and always find that next investment opportunity. Tip number four, always be communicating. Whether it's communicating with your client, whether it's communicating with the listing agent, the selling agent, the buyer's agent, whoever you're supposed to be communicating with, loan officers, title companies, there's a whole host of people that we have to communicate with. We are in the communication business. So don't be afraid to talk to people, even if it's a difficult conversation. If your client doesn't qualify for the month for financing, you need to let the other side know immediately and you need to let them know what are things that you're going to do to correct that. Do not be afraid to communicate. Now, for you who are maybe not as experienced in this industry, or some of you who have been doing it for a while, there's, for some reason, I've seen agents are afraid to talk, even if it's bad news. Pick up the phone, talk to your client, talk to your loan officer, talk to the other agent, talk to the sellers, talk to the buyers, talk to whoever you need to talk to, and let them know what's going on. People like to be kept in the loop. So it is important and it's imperative for you to talk to the other side. It is important and it's imperative for you to talk to your client, the loan officer, the title company. Again, we are in the communication business, guys. Tip number five, make sure that you're always prospecting. Again, I know I talked about that in tip two where I said, hey, you know, hire a telemarketer from your first commission. Whatever the case may be, always be prospecting. If you're not working, you're not eating. So make sure that whether that's reaching out to your past contacts, reaching out to friends, reaching out to family, uh, getting on social media, putting up videos like this on YouTube, the point is to always be prospecting. And if you're afraid to pick the phone up and make phone calls, guess what? Pick the damn phone up and make phone calls. Follow all the rules, regulations, I don't want you to get in trouble and sue me. Follow all the rules that are out there that you need to follow, but always be prospecting, guys. If you don't like calling people, you feel uncomfortable, just do it. Seriously, just do it. Whatever it is, make sure that you're out there, you're always prospecting. Now, if you're not prospecting you know, over the phone because you don't feel comfortable, you don't have a good speaking voice, for whatever reason that you make up, get out there and knock on doors. If you're not gonna do that, go talk to accountants. If you're not gonna do that, go talk to loan officers. If you're not gonna do that, go talk to title companies. If you're not gonna do that, go, go to investor meetings. You, you get my point. There's a lot of different ways for you to prospect in eight hours. I don't care if you do all of it. I don't care if you do two of it. As long as you can master one or two of them, you will be able to sustain a, the lifestyle that you want from this industry. Now, as you begin to expand that and you master three, four, five, six, you start creating systems, right? And that's where these systems come into play because then these systems will survive even when you're not out there prospecting. You will know how to prospect, what to do with those leads, how to turn those leads, convert them into clients, and then how to eventually get paid from those clients. The point is always be prospecting. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Again, top five things you should do to be successful as a real estate agent. If you want to learn more about the company, I'll have the link below to our career site. If you want to chat with me, my email will be listed below. Our office is here in Tyson's Corner. Subscribe, like this video, share this video. And if you want to learn more about First Decision Realty and what we teach here and what we offer here, come on by. We have great instructors that come out and teach for us. We have people from NBAR. We have people from MRIS. We have the legal counsel. So we provide you guys with the wealth of information so that you can be successful as agents. Now, I will always be here. The broker will always be here. So you can always turn to us if you miss the training classes. Uh, we also have some of our training videos on our career site as well. So if you want to pick those up and see you know, what CRM system we're using, if you want to check out our website, uh, do that again. First Decision Realty, www.firstdecisionrealtycareers.com. I look forward to seeing you guys on there. Take care, have a good one.